Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. I uh, want to talk to you today, guys, about the power of fasting and how it can break strongholds of the flesh off of your life. So if you're just joining me today, if you're hopping on here today, again, I'm the founder, the pastor, the voice of, of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero, and we're dealing with our, our, we're doing a whole series on the month of January on prayer and fasting. So today, Um, If you're watching this today and you're dealing with strongholds of the flesh, if you're dealing with anything from major sins of the flesh, we're talking about sexual immorality, lying, uh, uh, stealing, uh, adultery, any of these things that are very uh, alcoholism, drug addictions, major addictions. If you're dealing with these today, uh, then this is the broadcast that you want to hear today, especially uh, if you are joining and participating in, in, in this time of corporate fasting and prayer. If you're dealing with things such as smoking cigarettes and or you know drinking here and there or <clears throat> or the use of tobacco or the use of, of things of fleshly indulgences that you've been seeking deliverance from, seeking to be free from these things. These are things that you don't desire to want to be a part of or to do, but it's it's an addiction of the flesh. Uh, your spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, we Then this is the broadcast for you today. We're going to be dealing with this today. So if you've got your Bibles, and I'm going to grab mine. Uh, I've got my notes in front of me, so sometimes I don't use my Bible because I have the Scriptures laid out in front of me. But I'm going to go ahead and join with you today and go into the verse of Scripture that we're going to be going with. We're going to deal with Isaiah chapter 58. Again, um, this is what I call the fasting chapter, Isaiah 58. And this is where we're going, verse 6. The Lord says, Is this not the fast which I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness? And this is where we're going to focus today. I want you to underline this, highlight this. I want you to say this with me. To loose the bonds of wickedness. So that's what we're going to be homing in on today. I believe the Lord wants to set people free. I believe He wants to loose people from their bonds chains and fetters of wickedness okay so we're gonna we're gonna dig right into this thing today see uh when you get into this thing we begin the very first promise dealing with prayer and fasting is in isaiah chapter 58 he says is this not the fast which i've chosen and the number one thing that the lord tells us here that we can receive in participating in prayer and fasting is that we can be loosed or set free from the bonds or bands or strongholds of wickedness. Okay? Now, the word bonds here in the Hebrew is a term that actually describes chains or fetters similar to what we saw in the New Testament when it deals with the demoniac in the gatherings. Uh, if you remember the story of the, the demoniac that was bound by chains and fetters, that when, when Jesus uh, sailed to Decapolis, uh, he gets off of, he gets, he gets into the region, and there comes a man bound by a legion of demons. Uh, and the Bible says that no man could tame him, and he was bound by chains and fetters. So this word bonds here, actually in Hebrew, actually is very similar in connotation to the chains and fetters that we see pictured in the book of or in the New Testament dealing with the man and the gatherings. Uh, the the word bonds here, these bonds can represent strongholds and bondages in you and I's lives 
that cannot be broken under normal circumstances. They cannot be broken by uh, by abstinence alone. They cannot be broken by disciplines alone. They cannot be broken by counsel alone. They cannot be broken by these disciplinary measures that we can do. We can try to do all these things in our own power, but there is some things, guys, that we cannot break the habits of. We cannot break the addictions of. We cannot break the strongholds of unless they come through by prayer and fasting. Somebody say prayer and fasting. See, uh, if prayer alone could be the source or be the remedy, then we would not have what we see in Luke chapter 9. Let's go there. Luke chapter 9. If you've got your Bible, I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 9. Um, we're going to go over here. I'm going to show you an example of this. Luke chapter 9, verse 25. It says, uh, Jesus says unto them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And by the way, you know how you, the best way to, desire, to, to deny yourself is humbling yourself through prayer and fasting. You're denying your flesh, your desire, you're denying your indulgences. You're pushing a plate aside. You're pushing something. Um, I don't know about you, but my uh, listen. I would never cheat on my wife. I would never commit adultery on my wife. But the only mistress, and I told my wife this, the only mistress that I would ever have in my life is food. Listen, I'm Italian. You don't think I like food? I love food. It is. Um, other than God, it is probably my my greatest thing that I desire. So when we push aside our indulgences, push aside what we desire, and we humble ourselves through prayer and fasting, uh, this is again he says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Now watch this: for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Okay, all right, then we go on here. Uh, let's go on down here to verse 37. Again, Luke 9, 37. Okay, uh, it says, Now it happened on the next day when they had come down from the mountain that a great multitude met him and suddenly a man from the multitude cried out saying, teacher, I implore you or I beg you look on, look at my son for he is my only child. Now you listen to this and behold, a spirit seizes him. Somebody say a spirit seizes him and he suddenly cries out and convulses him so that he foams at the mouth. And it departs from him with great difficulty, bruising him. So I implore you, I implored your disciples, or I sought your disciples to cast this demon out of him. Now I know there's Christians that'll come on here and they'll probably be on Facebook Live, they'll come on YouTube, and they don't believe in demons, they don't believe in devils, they don't believe in exorcisms, they don't believe um, that that demons are even active in a in the life of us and you and I. They don't believe in hell. They don't. They have seminaries. They have. Uh, there's prestigious seminaries out there that believe that hell is not even literal. But even though the word of God says even the demons believe in God and they tremble. But we've got Christians today that don't even believe in hell. They don't believe in devils. They don't believe in demons. But yet here is a story in the New Testament where a man has a demon possessed boy who has a spirit of infirmity upon him that causes him to convulse, causes him to cry out, causes him uh, to, to cause difficulty and physical ailments upon his body. It says it bruises him. And th they came to his disciples and asked the disciples to cast these devils out of this boy, but they could not. Now I want to show you this. So Jesus answered and says, now listen to his response. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? You don't think Jesus ever lost his patience? You don't think Jesus ever got angry and sinned not? He says, bring me the son. Bring me your son. And as the son was still coming, 
the demon threw him down or it manifested and convulsed him and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and gave the child back to his father. Now listen to the next part. Uh, here, here we go. And they were all amazed at the majesty of God. And while everyone marveled at all these things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, let these words sink down into your ears for the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. But you know what else he said? Watch this. The word of the Lord says, now I put the wrong scripture. I believe this is the book of Matthew. And it says, uh, and when he come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast out the spirit? So Jesus answered it to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Did you hear that? So again, this kind, this kind of what? This kind of spirit, this kind of stronghold, this kind of bondage could not be expelled or this, this young man could not be delivered by prayer alone. But it had to come out by prayer and fasting. Now listen, friends, if Jesus spoke this and he spoke this to his, to his disciples, how much more is this relevant to us and to you and I today? So again, I, I want to, I want to uh, implore you today. I want to express to you today that there is strongholds of our flesh. There is addictions that you and I can be entangled with over the years. Listen, I understand this. When I was, before I, before I got saved, I was deeply involved with pornography. I was deep involved. Listen, I had a mouth that would swear under every breath. I mean, F-bombs, explicit words every time I opened my mouth. So there were strongholds that was deeply enrooted into my flesh. They passed down from, from generation to generation from my, from my father's side, from my mother's side. I was raised in a house that was filled with, again, pornography with alcoholism, with addictions, with swearing, with blasphemy, with all kinds of junk, okay? Uh, so I understand what it's like to be entangled with these things. And again, you and I can all, and many of us can relate to this. The only way that you and I will be delivered from these things is when we begin to humble ourselves through a time of prayer and Fasting. There's many of you today that are watching by Facebook and by YouTube. You are bound by lust. You're bound by anger. You're bound by unforgiveness. You're bound by bitterness. You're bound by greed. And the list goes on and on. Okay, listen, if you're tired of this, you're sick of this, you are over this, you're ready to draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough. I, I, if 2017, if 2016, 2015, maybe it's gone on for four years, five years, 10 years, uh, 20 years. Okay, if this has gone on and on and on in your life and you've had enough and you say enough is enough, listen, you may love God, you love His Word, you love His presence, you love the church and you love the people in the church, but in private, listen to me, you love God, you have, you, 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 you're, you're doing everything you know to do, but in private, you're dealing with cycles of sins, dealing with these things and you're saying, I want deliverance and I want to be set free from these things. Well, for Friends, I'm going to tell you, jump on board, begin to pray, begin to seek the Lord, begin to humble yourselves through prayer and fasting and watch God move and loose the bonds of wickedness from your life. Okay? Now watch, I want to share a, I want to share a testimony. Uh, and this is from a book called The 21 Day Fast. And this is from Pastor Bob Rogers, okay? Uh, this is our, our senior fa uh, pastor here uh, in Louisville, Kentucky area of Evangel World Prayer Center. But this is a book that I've had for years, over 10 years. Now, I want to share this. This is a powerful testimony that Pastor Bob shared in this. Uh, and it talks about these the strongholds. Watch this. Let me, let me give you this quote. A friend of mine developed a growth on his ear. He went to his doctor in his church and the doctor said, quote, pastor, I want you to get, I want you to go see a specialist that could be, this could be cancer. 
Uh, so this man went to a specialist and it was diagnosed as a fast spreading melanoma skin cancer. The doctor urged, quote, if we do not operate immediately and take some of this ear off, you could die. He told the doctor, quote, well, before I do that, I feel like I should fast and pray. So guys, we got some, uh, we've got some, listen, if you're watching this by Facebook Live, we the devil is raising trolls up. Yes, I said it. Raising up people that have no intention but to disrupt the service, to disrupt what God's doing, and we're going to block them when we can. We're going to remove and purge our, our broadcast of these uh, disruptors and distractors from what God is doing. But we just, you know what? I bind the devil. We take authority over the enemy. We know that the enemy would try to turn our attention away from what God wants to do in this broadcast and how he wants to touch the lives of people. And devil, we take great joy in putting you under our feet. We bind every distraction, every assignment of hell that would turn the people's attention away. And we declare to you that you're defeated. Strongholds are defeated. Infirmities defeated. Addictions are defeated. And every imp that you've sent out to try to disrupt and distract the people of God from what God wants to do is being brought down in Jesus' name. And I just release the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost to sweep through these messages, sweep through this broadcast, and begin to touch the lives of individuals in Jesus' name. So this man went on a 40-day fast. While he was on this fast, he was asked to come and pray. This was a pastor of a church. He was asked to come and pray for a woman who was bedridden. He went into the room where her husband was kneeling on the other side of the bed. She was lying there bound by demons. And from her position, she could not see the growth upon this pastor's ear. Now I want you to, let's back up. I want you to hear this. Here's a pastor who has a cancerous growth on his ear, who the doctor said, we're going to have to remove parts of your ear if you want to live. And this pastor said, before you do that, I'm going to go on an ex extended time of prayer and fasting. So this pastor went on a 40-day fast, led by the Spirit of God. And while he was on a fast, as a pastor, he was called to go to a woman who was bedridden to her home where she needed deliverance. Now, while she's there, without even looking at the pastor, these demons manifested and spoke out of this demon-possessed woman and, said, and laughed, a blood-curling laugh, and the demons manifested and spoke and said, Do you expect to get the demons out of me when you cannot even get yourself healed of cancer of the ear? And the woman laughed again. It, As a result, it made this pastor so angry that he turned and walked out of the room and walked into the bathroom of his own house and said, you foul devil, you will not destroy me with this cancer. He reached up and grabbed his melanoma on his ear and jerked it off of his ear. The blood began to, to pour from his ear. He washed himself. He got a towel. It finally stopped bleeding. He walked back in and cast the demons out of that woman and she was totally healed and delivered. He went back home. The next Sunday he was in church and this same doctor came and said, quote, Oh, pastor, let me see that ear. That operation that the doctor did was a success. That thing looks like you never had cancer before in your life and the pastor told him that he never went to a doctor never went to a physician and told him the story of what happened and God totally healed this man of the cancer of his ear what am I talking about? I'm talking about that God can set people free, loose the bands of wickedness, loose the bonds of wickedness and he can heal people in Jesus name okay so let's move on from this okay so next we see, let's go over to Isaiah 58, and we're going to, I'm about to close on this segment today. Isaiah 58, I'm building your faith today, and we're going to pray for some of you guys that need to be 
d- d- need to be set free from these. The next part we see in Isaiah 58, he says, we'll loose the bonds of wickedness and we'll undo the heavy burdens and set the oppressed free. Somebody say that with me. Undo heavy burdens and set the oppressed free. Okay, so here we see, and the next portion of this is a picture, okay, when we talk about heavy burdens and the oppressed free is something that's carried that is oppressive and worrisome. Heavy burdens and oppression is something that is oppressive and that is worrisome and that we carry about with this. Some of you, you're carrying about heavy burdens. You're carrying about oppression. You're carrying about depression. It's a picture of a ship with a hundred ton burden. If you picture a big cargo ships that are weighed down with burdens, weighed down with cargo. Come on, have you been going through cycles year after year, carrying around heavy burdens, carrying around oppression? Do you feel weighed down and tired of carrying the burdens of worry, the worries and anxieties from finances, from your health, from family, from drama in your family, from marital issues, marital problems, unsaved loved ones, lost co-workers, and the list goes on. I'm telling you, friends, the power of prayer and fasting can undo heavy burdens and it can set the oppressed free in Jesus' name. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay? I will give you rest. And it's interesting. He says right here that you will break every yoke. Somebody say every yoke. We want to emphasize this. I can't stress enough how important this principle is in walking in total freedom. In order to be totally set free from anything, you and I must destroy the yoke of the stronghold. Now you may say, what is the yoke? The yoke here in Isaiah 58 is describing, is is speaking of a bar or a frame that is attached to the heads or necks of of two work animals, uh, like in, like oxen, so that so that they pull a plow or a heavy load behind them. The beam rests in front of the shoulder or the the hump, dis- distributing weight and enabling natural movement. Custom fitting each side allows oxen of unequal size or strength to pull together, work in harmony, in harmony together without one being dragged by the other. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. As we can see here, a yoke for its true intent and purpose is a good thing as long as one is yoked to someone or something that is of unity with it. Oh, let me say that again. A yoke in itself is a good thing as long as its true intent and purpose is is, is yoked with someone or something that is working in unity. But where we as believers get in trouble is when we become yoked with someone or something that is not in unity Come on, with our purpose, with our vision, with our destiny, with our convictions or our calling. Let me say that again. When we begin to become yoked with someone or something that is not in unison with with our vision, our purpose, our destiny, our convictions or our calling, then this is when we become uh, or this is when we be, uh, when we get in trouble. This is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6.14. He says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? Some of you, some of you watching this, the reason why you can't be set free from the addictions and strongholds that you're bound by is because you're unequally yoked with people in your life that 
are are ridden with these things. Listen, you cannot expect to be set free from smoking cigarettes if you hang around a bunch of people that all they do is smoke cigarettes. You can't get you cannot expect to get free from people that are uh, free from lust and free from pornography if you hang around a bunch of people that always talk nasty, always talk dirty, always uh, telling unclean jokes, always watching that filth, always doing that stuff, going to the clubs, going to strip joints. If you hang around with this group of people, you can be guaranteed not to be set free and remain in the yoke of bondage in your life. Come on, somebody. If you want to be set free from the yoke of alcoholism, you can't expect to be hanging out in the bars and the clubs every Friday and Saturday night and hanging out with your buddies instead of, and they have have no desire to be set free from these things, no desire to go to church, no desire to get in the Word of God, no desire to have a walk with God, but instead, come on, they're always pulling out the Budweiser, always pulling out the beer, pulling out the drinks, pulling out the alcohol, and they desire to remain in that state of mind, in that condition. Listen, and many of you call yourselves Christians and you willfully have this lifestyle. Shame on you. It's not the will of God. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And then I will receive you unto myself. And then I will call you sons and daughters of the Most High. Come on, aren't you tired of hypocrisy? Aren't you tired of lukewarm living? Aren't you tired of going year after year after year with the yoke of oppression, the yoke of bondage, the yoke of of of, of heavy burdens and the bonds of wickedness that are pulling you down? Come on, the Bible says, being that we're surrounded about with such great a cloud of witnesses let us cast aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us come on some of you again you need to be set free from the yoke of lust the yoke of anger the yoke of unbelief the yoke of 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 these things and be set free in the mighty name of jesus so guys Listen, I've, we've sowed the word of the Lord into your heart today. I believe if you'll receive this word, this is seed that's went out today. Now we're going to water this with prayer. We've built your faith up today. We've encouraged you today. We've exhorted you today. Now we want you to, if you're listening to me today and you say, brother, I, I need I need prayer. I want to be set free from smoking cigarettes. I want to be set free from drinking alcohol. I want to be set free from adultery. I want to be set free from sexual immoralities from fornication all these things are part of this from from abominations and lifestyles that God calls in abominations I want to be free from 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 stealing I want to be set free from anger from bitterness resentment I want to be set free from the bonds of wickedness that are gripped my life, then I want you to lift your hands right now as we begin to agree with you in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see every hand. You see every hand that's raised. You see every heart. You see every individual under the sound of my voice. You see those that are behind this screen and every in, in any form or fashion and however which they're watching this. Lord, you're not bound and restricted by time and by restraint. But God, I thank you that you, the, you said the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And I'm asking Lord as those that are joining us today that through prayer and fasting, God, they're asking, they're desiring, they're seeking to be loose from every bond of wickedness. Loose from pornography. Loose from lust. Loose from addictions. Loose from strongholds. Loose from these things that are indulgences of the flesh that they've tried to put down but they pick it back up. They try to put it away but they pick it back up. They try to be set free and they go through a cycle in which they're free for, for seven days, 21 days, three days, three months, and then they pick it back up. But God, I'm asking that the power of the Holy Ghost would begin to sweep through these, this screen, begin to, to meet them where they're at, meet them in the living room, meet them in their office, meet them in their vehicle, meet them in their kitchen, meet them whether they're sitting down or standing up or they're lying down. Lord, I don't care where you meet them because the Holy Spirit is not, uh, he is not intimidated by walls nor time nor restraints but God I'm asking that the power of the Holy Spirit would begin to 
to touch lives right now and break every yoke. Break every yoke in Jesus' name. God, I say enough is enough. Lord, I thank you that you're setting people free in Jesus' name through this time of prayer and fasting in Jesus' name. God, that those that are bound by oppression, bound by depression, Lord, they've been through cycles of hurt, cycles of bitterness, cycles of resentment. God, they're laying, they're casting their burdens down at the feet of the Lord and they're picking up joy on unspeakable and full of glory. They're picking up the joy of the Lord that's their strength. Lord, I thank you from this day forward. There'll be a joy about them, a newness of life, an expressive uh, outward expression expression of the anointing and of the glory of God that will radiate from their face like Moses when he came off the mountain Lord everyone around him noticed an evident change physically upon his face that they even spoke to him, that he was not even able to remove the veil off of his face because they were not willing to be able to look upon the glory God I pray that you would touch people's lives today and in a way in a form and a fashion which no one can deny it Lord, their families will look upon them and say, there's something different about you. What's different about you? Why are you not cussing anymore? Why are you not swearing anymore? Why are you not drinking anymore? Why are you not going to the bars anymore? Why are you not going to the clubs anymore? Why why would you break off that relationship with that boy? Why would you break off that relationship with that girl? Why are you not running with that crowd like you used to run with? And you can say, look what the Lord has done in Jesus' name. Come on, do you receive that? today receive that today in the mighty name of jesus we pray it today father we receive it today god and we thank you that you are changing and transforming lives today father if there's anyone watching today by youtube by facebook they've never made their heart right with you they're not right right now god if they were to die if their heart was to stop beating in their chest right now they would not make it into the kingdom above all these things that we talked about today it is more important that they have a relationship with you, Jesus, than any of these other things. So we invite you right now. Listen, if you, if that's you right now, if you're backslid, listen, I don't care if you're backslid. I don't care if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what you've done or what you're doing. If you'll repent right where you're at, if you'll repent of your sins and turn to Him and give your heart to Him, confess your sins before Him, ask Jesus Christ to save you, wash you in the blood of Jesus, and transform you, make you a new creature in Christ Jesus, then he will come, set up his residence in your heart, and you will be born again, and your name will be in the Lamb's book of life in Jesus' name. And then I want you to go get you a Bible, begin to read the Gospels of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when you're done with that, go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and begin to read the New Testament. Begin to learn who Jesus was. Begin to learn his attributes. Begin to learn his characteristics. And then you get yourself plugged into a, a Bible uh, believing spirit filled church with a pastor who loves God, loves the people and preaches the whole Bible in Jesus name. Come on, if, if you can't find one in your area, we, we receive you today. We welcome you today and we want to help you today. Shepherd you, disciple you, equip you, edify you and inform you of the word of God and how to live a victorious life in Jesus name. So guys, we hope today's broadcast was a blessing to you. Um, I, I hope it's been a, a source of encouragement. I believe people got touched today. And if God's touched you and you're being set free, you got set free. You felt the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, testify, testify. The Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we want you to email us in time headlines at yahoo.com. You can go to our main website. You'll see a place where you can contact us. You can contact us on Facebook, on our messenger. Let us know. Share with us this great testimony. If you've never subscribed to us yet, if this is your first time joining us, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com, right up there in the top of the Facebook section of the description, you can click on that link. Please go and subscribe to us if you've not yet done that. Uh, if you'd like to sow into this ministry, again, all of our these messages are free of charge, no CDs, no DVDs. DVDs, no books, and no subscriptions, no subscription uh, fees at all. All we ask you to do is be obedient to the Holy Ghost and be obedient to God, and you give as the Lord places and purposes in your heart. And as you do that, God will bless you 
exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could even ask or think. So we're going to sign out today, guys. Um, and we'll be back on here either uh, either Thursday or Friday. Uh, again, we'll be back on here either Thursday or Friday. We're going to continue in our fasting series, and we'll pray. And we believe that God is going to touch many lives through this time of corporate prayer and fasting. Love you guys. God bless you. Have a good day.